Hello and welcome back to Base Camp. You're joining me in the Moerdenaars Karoo. I'm camping out at Buffels River Riverside Camping. I've got a really nice spot here by the river and I've just been doing a bit of map work. So a lot of people end up getting lost because they don't know how to read maps and they don't know um, how to interpret the information that they get from a map or how to use a compass and shoot an azimuth in order to navigate to a certain point on a map. For today's purpose, we're going to go over the obstacle. I'm going to go through all of that stuff today, the basics as well as some of my tips and tricks for navigating with something as simple as a lensatic compass and a 1 to 50,000 scale topo map. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. I recently had a conversation with one of the search and rescue guys in the Western Cape and out of interest he said a lot of the people who they rescue from the mountains are people who don't know how to read maps. This is predominantly because when you look at a map you see a trail that you want to follow um, but some people don't realize that those trails are not linear groundwork. There's a lot of scaling to be done, um, a lot of ups and downs, and it can take you a lot longer to cover that terrain than what you think it might. I'm gonna start off here at camp. I'm gonna do a little bit of map work here on the desk and then we'll head out and do some field work. So a couple things that you need for navigating in the bush um, first of all is a decent map. If you are out in absolute wilderness, as I am at the moment, um, having a military protractor is really cool. I like the square ones, they just work a little bit better than what the half moon ones do. Obviously a pencil and a compass and a notepad. As you go, it's important to make notes of the things that you see and more or less where you think you are. To get down to mapping basics, this is a lensatic compass that I'm gonna use. Um, you do get really nice base plate compasses that you can use to adjust for the angle of declination. I'm going to do it manually here so that you understand how it works if you haven't done this before. I know a lot of you who watch this channel have some really good navigational skills um, but stick around anyway you might pick up some tips and tricks here and I think you'll enjoy the field work that we're going to do. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the bottom of my map where the index is. It's going to tell me where north is on the map now there are three kinds of north. There's grid north, there is true north, and then there's magnetic north where all of our compasses point to. Grid north is basically the one that most of the maps work on. But grid north and true north are often so close together that we can just call grid north true north for the sake of um, general mapping. This is a map of Langsburg. You can see this is 3320 BB. That's where it is and those are the surrounding maps. So if you need an adjacent map because you're moving further off the map then you can find that um, number for that map over there. So here's where we get true north and magnetic north on the map. Magnetic north and true north are reconciled by an angle of declination. That's that angle over there. Now most maps will tell you what the angle of declination is. Here it says mean magnetic declination 25. Um, west particularly and it varies every year because it's based on the earth's magnetic core because that core moves the angle of declination for every specific area also changes and it basically changes all the time i've gone ahead and found the angle of declination for this area for 2023 which is the time of this video and it is 26 degrees west now really important if you put your compass down on a table or anywhere to orientate even on the ground it's really important to make sure that your compass is not being influenced by something on the table something on your person gear equipment cell phones rocks in the area your water bottle anything like that um, so that you are sure that you're actually getting the correct bearing. Important also to check that your angle of declination is in fact true. So that's basically what we're looking at, angle of declination. So this is what I'm saying is 26 degrees west. Now in order to orientate my map to the landscape so that I'm sure that what I'm seeing around me and what's on my map is the same because that's how I determine landmarks and that's how I find myself on the map, I'm basically going to put my compass right nearby 
my magnetic declination line. Let's do that so you can see a little better. And I'm going to turn my map until my compass and my magnetic declination line over there, my magnetic north line over there, are facing in the same direction. So that is pretty much it. So my map, as it is lying here now, is facing true north. So top of the map is true north, that is true north right ahead of me. So east, west, true north, south behind me. Magnetic north going that way at a variance of 26 degrees. Now what I want to do is I can have a good look around and I can orientate myself to the landscape. Um, not like this, but like this. Map down on the ground always so you've got a flat surface to work on. And then I can have a look and see, okay, I know I am up here somewhere. Mm, over there. My campsite is somewhere along the river here. Now, what kind of landmarks do I find around myself that I can also spot on the map? My first landmark is that I am somewhere on the river, um, over here. And the second landmark is that there is a fountain just across the river and there are cliffs. Because I'm right on the river, that's the first landmark that I'm going to be looking at. And then the second landmark is obviously the cliffs that are behind my camp or on the other side of the river. So I can, by those two things, already get a good idea of more or less where I am. Then I can start looking at river tributaries and I can start looking at the curves in the river and what the sort of landscape looks like on the river banks where I am. These over here are trees and there is actually a line of shrub just down the river bed. So that's why I'm quite positive I am actually over here. If you think you're here, but you don't see any of these landmarks once you've orientated your map, it means that you're probably not at that point in the map. Then I have some contour lines. Now my contour lines are at 20 meter intervals and you can usually see that at the bottom of the map. So I know the first line here is pretty much a 20 meter um, incline that over there and then it suddenly gets quite a bit steeper um, because each one of these contour lines is actually a 20 meter increment often where they converge they form cliffs so it doesn't mean that it's not particularly steep because there's only one line it means that it is in fact particularly steep because all of those contour lines if you could look at it in three dimensions have basically converged they've come across one another and they're now vertically stacked on top of one another so if you see converging contour lines, it actually means that that area there is very steep, which is exactly what I've got on the other side of the river here. Over here is a good example of a cliff face. So you can see all these contour lines here basically converge. So if I'm standing up here, looking in this direction, which is northwesterly direction over there, I should be able to see a cliff face. So we can check when we get to high ground whether that's the case if not then i might not be on the map where i think i am so that's a good way to determine whether you actually are where you think you are now let's say if my camp is here i wanted to go in an easterly direction to find the source of the spring what is really good is to actually draw your grid lines in from the side all the way in so that you know when you put your protractor down that your protractor is actually perfectly parallel um, with the edges of the map so there is a little bit of room for a miss endeavor here. And I'm looking at a bearing of between 75 and 80 degrees. So let's call it 77 degrees. If I want to transfer my bearing from my map to my compass, I have to adjust for the angle of declination. I need to be able to add my westerly declination onto my bearing that I get from the map. An easy way to remember that is west is best, east is least. If you look at a map of declination, you'll see that the lines basically converge toward a middle point. If I am in South Africa, I am on the easterly side of the line that determines declination, which means that I have a westerly declination. So if I'm looking at 77 degrees, and we said magnetic declination is 26 degrees, I'm going to add 26 to 77 that is gonna give me a bearing of 103 degrees. Okay, so now I've adjusted for declination, so I can use my compass to go on a bearing of 103 degrees. So I can basically shoot my azimuth 
using this 103 degrees here and I know then I will be heading in the direction that I've planned on the map if you want to look up the angle of declination for your area I'm going to put the link in the description to the video so you can go and check that out I'm also going to put all of the gear links that I have there as well as the live ready patreon link if you want to connect to a community of like-minded people if you've got comments or suggestions go and post them to the live ready discord server you have access to it through the patreon community it also helps me to keep making videos like this one for you guys i actually get asked about these quite often these are ranger beads they're also called pace beads so what you do is you calculate your paces in 100 meters so that would be every time your right leg hits the ground for example let's say you have 55 paces in 100 meters for every 100 meters you move you move one of the bottom nine beads down once you get to a kilometer you move the first one of the top beads down this is obviously kilometer two three and four so you can keep an eye on how far you've actually walked this is important when you're in the mist or you don't have particularly good visibility um, or it just looks like the terrain just looks the same all over the place if you need to go back in the same direction you know how far you need to travel back before you reach the same point you started at okay let's take our bearing and go and shoot an azimuth and see where we land up to shoot an azimuth um, or to take the bearing that I got from my map and to translate it to a direction of walking I take my compass this is what the thumb ring is for here I'm going to basically put it against my cheek I'm going to rotate it until I find through this lens 103 degrees once I find the 103 degrees there I can then look up and use the sighting wire over here to find a landmark in the distance I can then walk to the landmark and then shoot another azimuth from there and in that way I can navigate to where I want to be so now for me to find 103 so I see 103 degrees then I look up through the sighting wire and I find myself a landmark to head towards it's the top of that ridge over there and I'm going to use that to travel obviously trying to scale this from the water isn't going to be so easy so I'm going to have to find another route up and then travel there and then go further and that is how people get lost on the mountain they don't read the map properly or they don't understand what they're seeing they walk themselves into a cliff and then they try and go around and eventually they've got no idea where they are so important to be able to um, navigate to and from certain points and to know where you have traveled especially if you're traveling around an obstacle for today's purpose we're going to go over the obstacle so as it were the shortest route is not necessarily always the easiest one which is another reason why i think people actually tend to get lost um, in the mountains because this would be the shortest route that's a little slippery there because of all the muck that's run down there right up we go it's not too much of a bad climb let's get geared up So, scaled the rock face. It's not too bad. Pretty easy climb, I'll have to say. Um, came up this way. There. Where did I go up? There. Doggy! Hello, Indy! Indy also wanted to climb the wall. Just came up here. Right. So now I've got high ground and I can have a look around. It's a little dark now, I think, on the camera, but over there is a cliff face. Um, pretty much what we saw on the map. Where's my map? I've got my map in my pocket here, at the back. Pocket over here. Ah, space for all the gear. So the cliff faces on the other side, they look like they could be pretty much what I saw on the map. So that is, let's call it positive ID for where my base camp is at the moment. That's base camp down there. And um, right around over there is where the, the cliff face is. So I'm pretty certain of where I am now. Now I can start to go around um, navigating the area, finding more resources. The point that I was navigating to 
is just up here. So that's where I shot my azimuth. I'm gonna change shoes again and go that way. And then um, I can basically shoot my next azimuth or I can certainly just follow this little stream here um, in order to get to the fountain that I wanted to. Right, so I've hit my original landmark. I'm standing here by a fence that the owner said I can cross if I like. Um, that little peak over there is the landmark that I was heading towards, that my azimuth went towards. And right behind me at the moment is my campsite. So that's base camp down there. So now I know that I am on bearing and basically I can just take my compass out shoot my azimuth again and continue in the same direction. Well guys, that's it from me on map and compass work. I hope you've had a good time navigating from base camp with me today. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and until the next time, live ready. Yeah, cool.